Hello, ladies and gentlemen, how you all doing? This is Con Over coming to you with Company of Heroes 2. I know it's been a while, and I am actually doing this cast. I'm going to leave a quick shout over here to Christopher Price for bringing it to my attention. That's been quite a bit of time. I've been doing um, some Steel Division, but not giving the love over here to Company of Heroes. So I'm trying to redress that. So what do we got going on here today, folks? Well, we have a 1v1 on Briansk Forest. In fact, this is a live game. So spawning over here on the eastern side, playing as the OKW, it's going to be Manuel Ruiz 774, or as a German, probably Sieben, Sieben Fia. And he's got on, on already going for Fortifications Doctrine, so it's been a bit of time since you might have seen it, so there we go, that's what we're looking at for him. His opponent playing as the Purple Soviets, looking rather fashionable, and looking already selecting Shock Rifle Frontline Tactics, it'll be his opponent of Blackbird. I'm going to sneeze any second now, so if I vanish for a few seconds, that's why. This now belongs to the people and workers of the Soviet Union. So excuse me, that's what just happened there. All right, so Briosk Forest. Um, not one you tend to see very often. It's going to be kind of fun to check it on out in the meantime. So we will, uh, we'll have these big, big marshy areas up here to the northern side of the map. And indeed, Manuel Ruiz is going to start off with the kind of standard double Volks Grenadier. Well, Blackbird is, shockingly enough, going to go for Conscript Spam. He does not seem to care about the Penal Troops, which is more than fine with me. I'm kind of done seeing just the crazy, crazy amounts of Penal Troops. Media engagement between Volkswagen and Diaz and uh, Combat Engineers, and even, thankfully, that will be one that's going to go the way of the OKW. It's a very, very strangely placed uh, sandbags coming on out from the Germans. Uh, I don't know exactly what he's trying to accomplish with that, but he, it looks like he's just trying to almost wall off that peninsula a little bit. Definitely an interesting decision, to be sure. Uh, but while we're kind of getting ramped up, as both players go through the opening moves, taking territory, moving back and forth, trying to take ground from one another. Uh, like I said, yes, this is because of Christopher Price. I want to give a quick shout out to him. Um... And I will do my best to get you guys some more Company Fears 2 action here and there. I've been super, super busy um, trying to find a 9-to-5, as well as handling what I'm doing already. Uh, between doing my writing and more videos, and it's been, a, it's been a heck of a hard time balancing everything, but I'm doing my best. First real engagement happens in between two squads of conscripts and a beleaguered squad of Volkswagen Ideas. And you'll see that these guys are really going to start to get hammered as the conscripts are firing at them. From 10 paces away, not even. On both sides of the sandbags, rifles are firing back and forth, and at long last, the Germans are pushed back um, in a massive, massive retreat. But the besiegers are now turned into the besieged. And indeed, you can see right now they are forced back, not quite with heavy losses per se, uh, but they are hurting pretty darn bad. We can take it on out. Nope, STG. Uh, Trump pioneers are not going to be able to manage those kills. Now, we will probably see another squad of Volkswagen Ideas back on off, and wow, this squad of conscripts has gotten six kills, seven kills already in less than four minutes of game time. Um, and the Germans are able to finally force them back, but taking grievous losses to do so. And on top of that, too, Blackbird has already taken the southern uh, fuel point for himself. Scout Sniper team coming on out in favor of Blackbird. He's also got the support weapon company, uh, so Blackbird going for a very, very heavy investment into Tier 1. Uh, Germans, by the way, of course, not really looking to go for anything just yet. They could bring on an SWS in the next minute or two, but I think it's more important for them to re, uh, reinforce their particular squads. Conscripts, in the meantime, kind of just plopping around the map. Uh, Soviets, with their slightly increased fuel income, will be able... To see some earlier, I would say, investment into vehicular forces. However, they might have squandered it minorly by building both of these early Tier 1 command posts. Now, Scout Sniper Team, I can kind of understand why you're doing that. I mean, there are an awful lot of infantry over here for the Germans, though. And really sacrificing, what, 300 manpower or so is 360 is not going to be enough, I think, to sho shove back a determined force. It's not like the, these um, German troops are 
pinned by rifle fire. The cooldown between shots, after all, can be rather deadly and in the wrong sense as far as the Soviet forces are concerned. But we have ourselves a bit of quiet time as Manuel Ruiz starts to make this big rush forward with infantry, deciding all of his boys need to get their waders on as they go through the muck in the northern side of the map. It looks like I'm going to curve in and around on these conscripts. Question is, how much death and destruction will happen here? Well, a couple of guys dropping already for the Germans. It's going to continue to get worse and worse, I would think. Especially if you keep them in negative cover. Get out of the water. Get out of the water. They're trying to push back. They are going to do a lot of damage to that scout sniper. But, jeez, it's really just rifle fire that's gaining them the, this early ground uh, for the moment. Um, being out in that negative cover is really, really costing him. He's, he's dropping manpower like crazy. Um, and Battle Group Headquarters coming on out, though. So, Manuel Ruiz, man, he seems to be hanging steady. He does not want to give in. He's forcing back squads. Squads are getting forced back in every direction. Tons of fighting back and forth. Um, and really, here's the question now. How do the Strum Pioneers go against his conscripts? Well, if they're both in negative cover, it's going to be super, super easy for the Strum Pioneers. Um, but now that we have... There we go. Now, the ground has been completely and totally given on up. It is now up right in the faces of the conscripts. You need to see the health evaporate away from the Soviet forces. In the meantime, Battle Group Headquarters is going to start picking on up those medics. It's a good call right there. Uh, troops, in the meantime, are slowly going to get reinforced. And Blackbird, on his side of things, well, he's not quite um, ready to tech on up, which confuses me a bit. Uh, but I guess his troops are out on the field trying to capture, and already he is getting a very, very good lead in terms of resources. And I suppose I'm a little confused by this with Kettenwerfer. I imagine there are a lot of people who go and decide to pick up that, um... the early clown cars of Soviets, but I'm not sure I'd still invest in such a quick Rakettenwerfer. Especially since now I've seen the scout sniper team, that means that I would say the delay is real insofar as it comes to the Soviet forces. In the meantime, though, we are going to see the wave of purple. A very, very fashionable group coming on in. That's just so much rifle fire. The Storm Pioneers are not going to be able to hold steady against that. And yikes. Well, that was formerly a squad. As you can tell right there. In the meantime, well, the Germans are going to be able to hold steady. It's now going to be the Russians who are going to pay quite a bit. I'm always seeing a lot of blob play, folks. Again, that's the cost we might have to play every now and again for um, live games. But fear not, try to get a little bit more regular about this. And yikes, we're actually going to have... Germans are, are swarming around. They're behind the scout snipers. Will they take them out and retreat? One is already down. If they stood still, they'd have a better chance of shooting the other one. But at this point, not going to be able to manage it. And indeed, Soviets coming in behind are going to cause a lot of issues. And Germans just dropping right and left. They're not able to do a whole lot. And Manu Ruiz, Manny, he's going gonna to pay for it. There we go. Time to run. He's not running anywhere near as fast as he needs to. He's going to try to get around that forest. And retreat. No. Not going to retreat. Tank the Battalion Command coming on out now. And Manny's taking devastating losses already. Including a new squad as it goes on down. So I don't know what exactly he's planning to do. His entire army is right here. Um, which is a little bit depressing. Uh, but let's remember at the same time, now we are going to be able to put down those flak emplacements. So maybe he can go and plop that in as a... I'm not going to say... Uh, amazing defensive position, but it could be worthwhile-ish. Static defensive positions don't tend to last long, but plop them right there will allow them to force back against um, this entire munitions post, at least for the time being. With the MG-34 here as well, it will allow many a bit of overall cover. Nothing too great, and a little bit of covering fire, but I mean, nothing too great, but it'll stave it off for now. Uh, in the meantime, though, it doesn't look like Blackbird's really going to force the issue either. 
10 minutes in, and he's not even really aggressing to pick up this position here or to decap the fuel up to the top. So maybe not seeing the highest tier play. Uh, but guys, as I'm recording this, it is about 1 a.m. Eastern time. So I admit a lot of the replays that were up on the website are either super, super old. I don't want to give you old stuff. Or on the December balance patch, which is coming up rather soon. Uh, so be on the lookout for some new games coming out from there. And are we going to see... Yep, well, the Scout Sniper team is going to be in range of that machine gun pretty darn quickly. And it's going to cause a lot of problems for that MG34 team. And it begins already. Um, and now, we're surprisingly enough, these um, combat engineers are holding steady. They're just being aggressive as all get out. But they're pinned now. It's time for them to run. They got to go. They got to go. Scout snipers are getting forced back as well. And there's a flak half track coming on out from Manny Ruiz. That might be enough to force back the Soviets for a bit of time. Of course, the Blackbird now going for that whole shock rifle frontline tactics. Heck, if you had not gone for the tanky B battalion command, wow, he's already rushed up to a mechanized armor company at an 11 minute of a mechanized armor company. So while his infantry has been able to dominate the map pretty easily, um, that could spell doom for Manny's troops. A early T-34-76, that could be absolutely devastating. I was thinking myself that uh, Blackbird was planning to go for that early KV-8, try to rush that out as quickly as possible. As it is, he is still up about one and a half command points. Which means that that uh, Pack 43 well, he's got a bit of time before he can come on out. Uh, but once that does come out, he can probably plop it right about there, put a little bit of defense around it, and have a great, great forward position. But there's a 76. There's the flak track. And the Soviets, if they rush forwards, are not going to like what they find out. What's more, he doesn't have anti-tank grenades yet either. So, um, yep, this is going to get bloody pretty darn quick. Oh, wow. Shockingly enough, he doesn't see them just yet. Just barely out of range. Shock troops coming on through. And there's that T-34. Uh, but we also have the Kettenwerfer right in the area as well. Going to see a Faust? It's gutsy. He's super gutsy. Flak track in the meantime, well, he's going to start to dominate that entire engagement. So here we go. He's blown apart. Yeah, he's coming on in after with Voskondia's half strength. They're going to definitely pay the price from that. Um, Sturm Pioneer's trying to hold steady to take that center position. Not going to be able to do so. And Germans also lose their northern fuel position. We're getting Verfer from the side. No longer from the side. Does great amount of damage. They're going to get another round off before the T-3476 backs up. Never mind. But an odd bulwark now for the Germans, able to hold steady with a squad of, you know, infantry, an anti-tank gun, and a flak track. Now, the flak track up here is going to do pretty darn well. I mean, geez, against the, the even, the armor, excuse me, armored shock troops, um, not going to be proof I guess that what that's a two and a half centimeter cannon two centimeter cannon i can never remember unfortunately two centimeter cannon yep the germans making the right call take out that position first then backtrack and take the fuel uh but keep your opponent with as minimal amount of fuel as possible emmanuel ruiz again he's got to get to that pack 43 he's got to get to that lefh um, he may not go for the later game material, and, and it's not the best idea, but if he wants to go that route, then he has to have his later game material, uh, his later game call-ins. The LEFH plop it back here, put a um, anti-tank gun or two out here to kind of protect. Ooh, there's an early Katyusha, though. And you could shell a bit Jesus out of the Soviets, and that would just be just plain funny. Sorry, but it just would be. I also have a weird sense of humor sometimes, so do forgive that. ISG is coming on in, though, and I cannot help but feel that that rushed Katyusha is going to cause quite a few issues for the German forces. And now we are going to see that SWS, so guys, we're not going to see the LEFH or the Pac-43. It's going to be the fuel instead going for that Schreyer Panzer headquarters. Understandable, mind you, but um, not going to see that instead from Germans. No, no... Heavy emplacements, I don't think. Ready to execute. Ready. 
Now, little Katya is on the map. All the German, excuse me, Soviet infantry is waiting for the jump off point. They're moving on forward to a, 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 a fuchsia wave. And the Germans now, what can they do? Well, they're putting the Shred Panzer headquarters a little bit further to the south, which is not the greatest idea if you know your opponent's got stuff like the Katyusha. And he's resetting himself right about now. Um, my cat and Vefa, there we go. So these guys are going to just be able to work um, surprisingly efficiently together. ISG now, in the meantime, well, that's going to do a good amount of work. Katya is going to go and throw out rounds, trying to find that Vakatneva, surprisingly enough already, hasn't gotten as many kills as I would have thought. Two kills, there, there we go, finally getting two kills. But Katya does not force a retreat, and indeed, shockingly, the Germans hold steady among all the death and destruction. Uh, Conscripts are going to slide around to the north, trying to get behind the German position. Not going to go well, though, and these shock troops are the first to feel the devastating pain. Yeah, Rick Forever has to back up now, though. Shock troops might go down? No. They have forced back instead. ISG doing some good work, and this flak track has 13 kills. That is a surprise. Now, if he just turned his fire over here, he might be able to take out that entire squad that remains. Uh, but as they move away on retreat now, don't think that is going to happen. Instead, scout sniper team coming on in, trying to take out the last couple of models here from the Katnvefa. Not going to be able to do so. In the meantime, though, 453358, Germans continue to lose relative ground. And while, while again, this is not, like I said, been the most stunning play... Um, Soviets haven't really needed to be too unique about this. Not even really at all. On Briask Forest, it's not the easiest of maps to play on. I mean, you have a lot of obvious choke points here. The forest here is just an absolute beast to fight through. You don't want to throw any kind of vehicles down there. And, and really to the north, well, the marshes don't do that great either in terms of vehicle usage. Conscripts, though, eager to try to stop the, the Germans from taking the center position. And Storm Pioneers, who could have stayed steady, decide not to do so. ISG, in the meantime, well, it looks like support weapons are going to keep the Germans in this for the time being. Support gun. Fire, boys, fire. Not going to. Okay. Yeah, and this is really support. This is a poor site, by the way, guys. Don't don't put your Shrap Panther headquarters here. I can guess he's trying to try to cover both approaches, more or less. But it's just, it's like, you try to get both, and you end up really not going to get either. The Cat and Buffalo continues to be kind of a pain, throwing out rounds like crazy. Volk's going to go on down. One squad left there. And now here comes the shelling that will probably cripple the German army. Lots of damage being done there. Not a lot of models dropping just yet. That'll happen soon enough, I would think. Um, Flak Track goes on down. One more shot to take out that T-34. And will not happen. Rakat and Buffer gets taken on down. Volkskundadiers are practically dead. And while the Soviet infantry is quite wounded, to put it delicately, um, the German army is in terrible, terrible shape. 4-5-3, 3-4-2, and less than 19 minutes in, ISG is trying valiantly to keep the Soviets back. Between them and this very, very brave MG-34... They're doing some uh, some good damage, but not sure it's going to be enough. Now, if I were the Soviets, I'd be calling in the KV-8 immediately. And the usage of smoke, for some reason, just completely befuddles me, but alrighty. He's trying to shell. Okay. Well, I wasn't showing the right thing, I can tell you that much. Scout sniper team continues to be surviving, uh, which is also surprising. 25 kills, 10 kills, 3 kills. Uh, surprise, almost the flak track didn't last longer, considering how viciously uh, Blackberry was trying to take it on out with just infantry. And the brief respite looks like it is now allowing the Germans to come back out on this map, pushing down to the south, but they should have done about 10 minutes ago, sending one squad at least to take away this fuel from the Soviets. Soviets, in the meantime... 
floating so, so much. German is floating only minorly less so. And neither side seems can, that they want to surrender at all for obvious reasons. Um, all of the German defensive positions are getting shelled like crazy. Question is now, what we see, yep, there we go. One rocket goes and takes out all that madness. Um, but the support weapon teams have been awfully lucky. Lucky that the Katyusha has not moved any closer. Really, it should be doing that. Settling even to right here would decrease the spread rather prodigiously. And allow for a much more devastating action. Now, funny thing right now is we do have Soviets behind enemy lines. I don't know if they're waiting for the Germans to move forward or what. But it's not going to go well for them. Um, and now Rock 3 Flamethrower armed combat engineers coming on through. Going to be able to cook and burn and probably take on out the brave little Rakettenwerfer man. Does not do it though. And the last bastion of the OKW tries to hold in the face of this Soviet onslaught. These guys are going to go down just a second. Whether it's from shock troops or otherwise, I would be very surprised. I am, I am surprised. Color me surprised. And while the shock troops continue to come under artillery fire, they just, uh, they're rather plucky. They just hold on steady and they just kind of keep moving right back and forth. Of course, that poor guy disappears in a bullet base of water, blood, and gristle. But the T-34's got 15 kills already. He's been on the map. What? A fair bit of time. Wow, that was impressive. And while the shock troops do go down... Yikes. Too close. Too close. Too close. That's not when you want to move forward. Don't tell me to hear the throws. Oh, okay. IS-2 comes on through. Alright. That should be dead. Katyusha dies. But uh, an IS-2 is here, which means the Germans really need to start peeing their pants because there is nothing that's going to stand up to that the Germans currently have. It's 58.50 uh, 58, right about now. There are a mere, mere seven stars of veterancy on the German side. And while the Soviets aren't much better, at least they're in double digits. Not by much, but they're in double digits. That's a step in the right direction. So 4 5 3, 3 oh, 4. It's interesting to think that neither player has really ended up taking... Oh, jeez. Taking more than one VP right about now. IS-2 comes up to the field. Gets his first kill. Rock 3 Flamethrower doing some damage. And this Panzer is going to find himself outflanked alone in green fields. Riding with this fields of sauerkraut on his face. And the IS-2 decides instead to just let him go. Couple of hits here and there, and nothing too great. And shockingly, only three kills. Combat engineers are going to go down here, repairing out in the open, which is just completely stupid. Um, we might see a dead T-34, but uh, Blackbird has the wherewithal to just continue to hold and create more and more vehicles. At this point, not even deigning to shoot at the Jagdpanzer. He will now redress that mistake, though, with the finality of a headsman's axe. The second he sees him, it'll put a shell up his backside, and that'll be it. Machine gun goes down. No, he doesn't even pressure it. Fires a warning shot, tells him never to come back. Um, But uh, neither player wants to finish him off. Blackbird has to know he's got him on the ropes. There's not much left for the Germans. The Germans are... Again, under 40 army supply. Soviets not much better, but they definitely could be if they wanted to. Just start throwing shock troops like crazy. But he correctly identifies that the Panzer is the main target here. And that's going to be Manny actually going and tapping on out. So we there we go, guys. Like I said, not the highest of tier play. So maybe not the most perfect one to come back to on Company of Heroes 2. But I wanted to make sure I got you guys up to something. To at least satisfy your cravings for right now. Not going to be a great hit of, of uh, the drug, but uh, hold steady with me, guys. Let's get some more good games coming up in the next few days as well. So a big shout out and a big thank you to Christopher Price. Um, a big thank you to you guys for coming on back for this, even if it wasn't a great, great match. Um, and I will see you all soon. This is Connell Work signing off. Take it easy, everybody.